Hi, this is JJ of CCBC. In this video, we'll look at working with scenes inside of Flash. Major topics we'll cover are managing your scenes and duplicating scenes. The software I'm using for this video is Adobe Flash Creative Suite version 6 on a Mac. So let's take a look at this. So I've created two, um, two movies that I'm going to use to illustrate why scenes are useful. So here's my first movie. I'm going to run it through and then we'll take a look at scenes and how I've used the scenes to manage this movie. Okay, so the first thing you notice is my numbers are out of sequence. Now the way I set up this movie was a series of scenes. Uh, you'll notice this first scene, all I have is the number one. Makes sense, scene one, number one. Um, I'm going to show you how to manage your scenes. So in order to do that, you need the scene window. Now, by default, that panel is not open. So we'll go to our window menu. It's hidden under other panels. And here you have your scenes. So I'm going to click on scene. And it usually opens up as a floating panel like this. Um, you can use the floating panel. I personally like to dock my panel over on the side here, but for this video I'm going to leave it as a floating panel and we can take a look at it this way. So here you can see I have five scenes set up and they're named scene one, two, three, four, five. Now if I click through them you can see scene one was number one, scene two is number two, scene three I intentionally did out of order. Alright, so that's five, scene four is still four, and scene five is actually three. So three and five are sort of reversed in this stack. Um, so when it plays the movie it goes from the top scene to the bottom scene. It's kind of like layers, it just works from the top down. Um, it doesn't matter what the name of your scenes are. So in order to fix my movie, what I can do, remember this is scene five and this is, or number five and number three, even though the names are different, I can swap them in the stack. So I'm gonna bring this down to the bottom. I have one, two, four, three, five. So I need to take this one and move it up in the stack and now I have one, two, three, four, five. So if I run my movie, you'll notice it goes through the scenes sequentially. It doesn't matter what number or name the scenes are, but it plays from top to bottom. So I now have scenes one through five. All right, so um, that's one good way of organizing your movies. And your movies will often be broken down into sections that you can call scenes. Um, I would recommend animating a different scenes as different scenes. So use this uh, scene tool to do that. One of the reasons for doing that is <clears throat> you could very well do the entire movie in one scene. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the problem comes when in your timeline, let's say the scene is a thousand frames long and I decide to make some changes in the first 100 frames. Well that could throw the timing off in frames 800 through 900 depending on you know how many layers I have and how I've set up the actual movie. So by creating each scene individually, I can make edits to scene number two and I can either increase or decrease the timing of this scene without it affecting any of the scenes that follow after it. So by breaking your movie down into individual scenes, it gives you much greater control over the movie as well as the sequencing and timing of all the animations that take place inside of your movie. So that's one really good reason to start using scenes. Um, inside of Flash. To make a new scene, there's three tools down here. You can add a scene, you can duplicate a scene, or you can delete a scene. So if I don't want there to be a fifth scene, I can just delete it. And it'll verify if you do. I'm not actually going to delete this one. I kind of like one through five, so I'm going to hit cancel. Um, another thing you can do is rename these. So I could just double click and name this one, two, three, four, five. And now the names accurately reflect what number is being shown in each of these scenes. All right, so that allows you to manage your scenes. One other benefit of scenes is duplicating. So I'm going to go to another movie. All right, so here I have a single movie. It's not a very pretty scene. I just did something really basic with my um, intermediate skills. Uh, but let's say you took the time to create a really nice scene for your movie. It was much more complex than this. You've invested four or five or more hours of your time and you want to use this background in multiple scenes. So what you can do is you can duplicate it. All right, so here I have the duplicate scene option. I just click it and it makes copies of the scenes. So I'm going to call this um, sunrise daytime 
and sunset. All right, so for each of these I'm going to do a different animation. So I'm going to work with my sunrise scene and here I'm going to unlock my sun layer and I'm actually going to set up an animation here. So my sun is already a symbol. I'm going to create a motion tween. Um, let's just do a nice long 80 minute sunrise. I'm going to set a keyframe here because this is actually where I want my sun to finish and its starting position. I'm just going to move it down like this. So it's below the horizon and uh, I actually want it to rise behind the hills and everything so I'm going to set it backwards in the stack. Um, you'll notice none of my other assets appear after frame one so I need to insert frames for each of those. Now, they're already locked, so I better unlock them first. Insert some frames. Insert frame, and now they're all available for this scene. Another nice feature with scenes is you can test just a scene. You don't have to test the whole movie. So once your movie starts to get really long, it's much easier to just test scenes rather than my entire movie. So there's my sunrise. Okay. Um, for my daytime, I'm going to, again, unlock all of this and just do a, a quick animation here. So we'll insert some frames. And I'm going to lock all of these layers down again. And then I'm going to insert a new layer. Um, and this is where my animation is going to take place. So I actually have a cloud asset I already made. I'm going to bring my cloud asset in and put it up in the sky here. That's pretty good. And I'm going to put the motion tween on this. On my last frame, I'm going to move my cloud all the way across the sky. This mo might move a little bit fast for a cloud, but you get the idea. I'm going to have it pass behind the sun. Actually, it's a cloud, so it would pass in front of the sun. Let's put it at the top of the stack. So again, I can test this movie, or actually just this scene. So I'll go test scene. All right, we're starting to look pretty good. Um, with my sunrise, I can also do another quick animation. Let's do another layer in here. We'll call this uh, night. And I actually made a night asset. We'll bring that in. I'll position it on my stage. Uh, whoops. Give it an accurate position. There we go. Create a motion tween. Insert a final keyframe. And I'm going to change the alpha of my evening to daytime. So it's actually will be hidden. Um, so it'll start nighttime, and as the sun rises, nighttime will go away. Then I'll have my daytime. I'll have my cloud pass across for the daytime. And then for sunset, basically the same thing. So I'm going to unlock all of these layers, uh, put in my extra frames so that my scene exists for more than one frame. Here for the sun, I will insert another frame, create a motion tween. For the final position, we'll put it down below. And again, I'll have to move it in the stack a little bit so it's behind the hills and everything. And then last but not least, we'll put another nighttime layer in there. Bring in our night asset. Let's select these frames. Drop it on there. Position it. And create a motion tween. Save our final position as a keyframe. Uh, go to the first one. Set our alpha property again. So put it to zero. It usually affects all the keyframes after it, so I'll bring the alpha back up to 100 because we want it to turn to nighttime. So we'll test this scene. So the sun sets. And now we can test the whole movie. You have uh, nighttime, 
sun rises. During the day, a cloud passes overhead. Once the cloud is gone, the sun will set, it goes back to nighttime, and then it repeats the process. So here I didn't have to redraw that background three times for each scene. I could create it once and duplicate that scene numerous times. Another good practice is to actually duplicate the scene and just keep a backup in your scene stack. Um, you could just call it copy or something like that or template and then before you publish your final movie delete any template scenes or backup scenes you had um, in case you want to make copies of them later. So hopefully this shows you how to work with scenes, how to manage them, and the value of being able to duplicate scenes if you're going to reuse assets across multiple scenes. Hope you learned something. See you in the next video.